Max Dupree said the first responsibility of leadership is to define reality. It was not realistic for JFK to stand up in the 1960s and say, hey, we're gonna land man on the moon. That was not a realistic goal. It's never been done before. All they knew how to do when he gave that amazing vision was they knew how to crash spacecraft in the ocean. They didn't even know if they were able to land on the moon, whether they'd be able to take off from the moon or not. It was not realistic for Nelson Mandela to think that after spending 27 years in prison that he would one day become the president of the nation that sent him to prison. It was not realistic for a black man in America to go up to believe that one day he could become president when only 50 years ago blacks were still being hung on trees. But I'm about great leaders. Great leaders are not realistic. They're intelligent, they're accurate, they're specific, they're wise, but they're not realistic. We're not according to other people's standards anyway. You see, great leaders see things that other people cannot see, which therefore enables them to do things that other people cannot do. A great sporting captain, if their team were down five minutes in all game, that great sporting captain would say to their, to their team, listen, we're down five points, but let me tell you what the next five minutes is gonna look like. And they begin to create a new reality, to define a new reality that includes teamwork and focus and concentration and energy and effort. Great leaders define realities. Now some of you might be sitting there thinking, well you know what Glenn, I'm not leading in any significant area in my life, but I gotta tell you, you are. Your life is significant and you need to be leading it. In fact, if you can fix your internal leadership, you can fix and change your whole entire life. You are a leader. Biz Stone, who's one of the founders of a social networking platform called Twitter, he's worth about $250 million at the moment. I recently read his autobiography, What a Little Bird Told Me. And in his autobiography, he describes that when he was a young boy, his father left him when he was really young. So he's left to grow up in a single parent home. So when he started high school, he learned according to the movies that if you want to gain any sort of social credit school, you kind of had to be good at sport. Only problem is dad wasn't around to actually teach him how to play much sport. Wasn't there to really throw the ball to him. Nevertheless, he thought he'd try out for some sports. Try out for the basketball team, was standing in the wrong place for too, for too long. Try out for the football team, got smashed. Try out for the baseball team, couldn't bat, couldn't throw. Most people go, okay, three strikes, I'm out. But you know what he does? He decides he's gonna change and try to define his reality to suit him. So he does some research. He finds out that his school doesn't have a lacrosse team. So he's thinking if no one else has played lacrosse, then that kind of evens a playing field. So he goes to his school principal and says this, if I get enough players, and if I can get a coach, can I start our school's first lacrosse team? The principal says, knock yourself out. He gets the players, he gets the coach. They elect him captain, because no one else knew what lacrosse was. He said, I learned a really valuable lesson that time. Bizstone, he says this, he says, opportunity is manufactured. You and we've been designed to do what our world has created us to think, wait for the right opportunity to present itself, and then strike while the iron's hot. But listen, if opportunity is nothing but a set of circumstances, why don't you create the opportunity for yourself, then you'll be first in line to take advantage of the opportunity. Have you ever heard someone whine and complain about how they missed an opportunity, or how they were overlooked, or they didn't get a leadership position? No, if the leadership position isn't there, you need to manufacture it yourself. You need to create the opportunity yourself. Don't wait for someone to give you a title or a badge. Choose yourself. You know what I love about the Hunger Games series of movies? Is it depicts a young girl who volunteered to be a leader. She wasn't chosen, she wasn't invited, she chose herself. We need to reframe our thoughts, reframe our reality, and actually understand that we actually can frame the world that we live in. We are literally metaphysical engineers. 
constantly hacking reality to construct new worlds. Get rid of your negative biases, because if you keep fighting for your limitations, then you'll end up keeping them. You have a responsibility to master your future, and how you do that is by controlling your most dominant thoughts. Reality is actually an inside job, so lead.